On my last video, I showed how UK internet service provider routers like this Vodafone THG 3000 are able to deliver more than one gigabit per second Wi-Fi throughput for a cost that is often a fiver or under on secondhand marketplaces. This gives these routers an ideal basis to be high performance, ultra low cost access points. And fortunately, only a small amount of relatively simple setup is required, which I will guide you through step by step in this video today. The first step is to plug the Vodafone hub into our main supply here. And when we do this, some lights come on. While it just boots up, I will point out the information at the base of the router. So we've got the Wi-Fi name, the Wi-Fi password, the IP address to connect to the admin interface, and then the administrator password there. I have now given the Vodafone router about half a minute to fully power on. So it's now time to go to the laptop. You will notice that I have typed up the details from the base of the router into a notepad file to speed things up a little bit. And I will just start off by copying the Wi-Fi password and then going into my Wi-Fi network options where you will see the Vodafone router is present. I will then insert my Wi-Fi password there and press next. The device will then load up a browser window indicating that the Vodafone router is not connected to the internet because it's not. But we needn't worry about that for now and then browse to 192.168.1.1 where we are then presented with the admin login page. I will copy the admin password and paste it in and then we have our admin options here. The first settings to be changed on this Vodafone router relate to its Wi-Fi configuration. And therefore, we are going to go onto the Wi-Fi tab in order to change them. This tab presents us with a load of options, but what we are mainly interested in is the Wi-Fi name and password. Now, dependent on your preferences, you might want to set this Wi-Fi network name and password to match that of your existing Wi-Fi network and its password, or you might want to have a completely separate name for the router altogether. In this case though, I want the Vodafone hub to act as a separate hotspot and therefore I am going to give this the name Pete C and I will also give it a new password that I can remember. So that password is now entered in so I will press save and then at the bottom of the page, I will then press apply. The router will now set itself up with the new Wi-Fi name and password. So if I dive into my Wi-Fi settings again, we will see that we now have a hotspot called PC, or in your case, what you have set it to. Then I'll press connect, insert, the password that I set in the admin interface and then press next. This will connect the laptop up to the router once more and load the web page saying that the Vodafone hub is not connected to the internet. As before, we go into 192.168.1.1 and then insert the default admin password because we haven't change the admin password. 
With that inserted, we get the same interface as before. And I'll just point out some options that we can additionally change in Wi-Fi. So there is the option to set up separate network names for the two Wi-Fi bands. So you can have, say in this example, PC and PC 5 gigahertz, which in some situations and dependent on your devices and preferences, again, you might want to do. However, I found the band steering on this router to be pretty good and therefore it's a bit 50-50, but I'm happy with it as it is for now. We can always change it later anyway. If we go to the top and set this to expert mode, there is a setting that I would advise changing though. And that is found within the settings on the side here. And if we scroll down, I would change this thing that says auto mode to all channels, which will enable the router to support the DFS channels on five gigahertz which are significantly less congested than the channels that you get on compatibility mode. So I'll set that to all channels and then press apply. Now with apply pressed, this router is going to reset itself up to support the additional channels and therefore it will take a bit of time for it to set itself up again before we can reconnect. As the Wi-Fi network name and password have remained the same, the laptop just happily reconnected onto the hotspot as you can see here. And once again, we will need to insert our admin password to log in. The next step I would advise is to change the router's admin password, which we can do using this message here, which says to change the password. And with this, we need to enter the old password and then insert a new password. And again, and then press save. This will then redirect us to the router's login page again, where we can insert the new password. And there you can see we are now in the admin page again. The final setup step for making this Vodafone router perform its access point duties is to configure the IP settings of the device such that it slots in nicely to the existing network that it will be plugged into. There's a whole load of different ways of doing this. So I will show you the way that I tend to do it. The first thing to do is to connect our laptop here to one of the existing Wi-Fi hotspots. I will then start an IP scanner. There are lots available. I'm using Angry IP Scanner, but there's also Thing and a whole load of other IP scanner tools that you can use for this purpose. I will then start the IP scan here, which will scan the network for devices. It takes a little bit of time because of the number of IP addresses to scan but it is fairly soon completed, as we can see here. If we sort by host name, we can then see the devices that are on the network and their IP addresses. The importance of this list is that we must not give our Vodafone router an IP address which is already in use, and the IP addresses on this list already are. There are no devices below 192.168.1.64 on my list and therefore giving the Vodafone router an IP address like 192.168.1.20 is probably safe on my network. To double check though, 
it is best if possible to connect up to your network's existing gateway router and look at its DHCP settings. In my case, the DHCP zone runs from 192.168.1.64 to 192.168.1.253 and therefore the IP address that I suggested earlier for my Vodafone router of 192.168.1.20 is absolutely fine. No devices are currently using that IP address and it falls outside my DHCP zone. So that's all good. All that is left now is to feed in this IP knowledge into the Vodafone router. So what I will do is once again, connect via Wi-Fi to this Vodafone router, like so. It once again will load our lacking internet page, but I'll go straight on to 192.168.1.1 and insert my password. And then we need to go into expert mode before then going into settings, local network and giving the Vodafone hub the IP address that I came up with from the research, which in my case is 192.168.1.20. But in your case, it might well be different and then the DHCP server needs to be switched off so this doesn't interfere with anything on our network already. Now this router, this Vodafone router does have the ability to run multiple Wi-Fi SSIDs for like a guest network and route them slightly differently. I'm not using the guest network so I can essentially ignore this but I'm just going to turn off the DHCP server anyway. And then all I'll do is press apply. It comes up with a message saying the gateway IP address has changed and the router will now reboot. However, once the Vodafone hub has rebooted, as its DHCP server is off, my laptop will no longer be able to get an IP address off it, at which point it will then be time to plug this Vodafone hub into one of the Ethernet connections off my existing main gateway router, and then everything will be set up. The Vodafone hub has now rebooted, and you can see that it has not received any packets and that, and it doesn't have any IPv4, IPv6 connectivity. And this is just because well, it's not connected to anything and its own DHCP server is switched off. So therefore it's time to plug this in to the rest of my network. The ethernet from my main gateway router comes up to that port there and through this gray lead into now the back of the Vodafone hub. It is important to note that the ethernet cable has to be connected to one of the yellow LAN ports and not the blue WAN port. If you use the blue WAN port, this will not work. I have now gone back to my laptop and you can see it happily connected there. And then if we go into our web browser, we can access the admin interface on the IP address we set just now, so 192.168.1.20. And if I just go on my website here, you can see that's loaded. Thanks for watching. It's 4.15 a.m. here, and you can see that the sun is beginning to rise. So to end, I'll just say that if any of you've got any questions or have any issues setting up your Vodafone routers as access points then please comment below and I will try and help. I find it quite fun setting up these various consumer routers as access points and using them for perhaps slightly unintended purposes so there may be future videos of this type upcoming instructing the public how to set up and reuse other routers to improve their home networks. So I look forward to seeing you again 
and stay safe and try and get more sleep than I will probably be getting tonight.